I'd like to discuss non-equilibrium interpretations of equilibrium phase diagrams. So we know that these phase diagrams are generated only for equilibrium conditions. So we know the uh, thermodynamics of the system and the phases present and the free energies relative to each other as a function of temperature or pressure or whatever variable you're interested in. And these are valid only when there is no consideration of kinetics. So for example, if we take you know, this composition and we heat it up to liquid, we cool it down, we know that it starts out as liquid, it ends up as you know, alpha uh, crystals surrounded in a eutectic microstructure. In this region, the two-phase region, we have liquid and alpha, and the alpha, we can read the composition from the uh, intercept between the tie line and the phase boundary, and we can use that then to determine the phase fraction as well, so the, the relative size of alpha to liquid in the system. Our assumption is that at any point here, this alpha in its entirety is given by the intercept of the tie line and the phase boundary. And this is true only if we allow the system to equilibrate as we cool. So, you know, we start out with a composition which is very rich in our A component, whatever A may be, uh, and as we cool to a lower temperature, now the predicted equilibrium composition of A is actually a little bit less, sorry, of alpha, a little bit less A-rich. And as we cool further, the composition of alpha has even less A in it. And the assumption here is that these phases are homogeneous in composition, and the composition is given by the intercept. But for that to happen, you have to wait and allow for A to diffuse outward into the liquid and for some B to diffuse inward because there is increased B contribution to the alpha phase. And we know that in real life, that's not how it works. So we have to take and consider non-equilibrium conditions. And the way that we do that is we, we generate the phase diagram for the equilibrium case, and then we interpret it thinking about non-equilibrium events. So for example, when we think about cooling through this two-phase region, our first phase is going to have, our first solid is going to be very rich in A. As you cool down, the next layer on the outside is a little bit less A-rich, and even less A-rich as we go lower. And as a result, we wind up with a uh, crystallite that's precipitating out of the liquid, which is inhomogeneous, and it has actually a gradient from the interior to the exterior that changes. And this is frequently referred to as coring, where you have the interior core being different from the exterior. If you want to think about this, what it also is telling us is that if I were to integrate overall the amount of A within this entire precipitate, it's actually going to have more A than is predicted in the final. So the way that we interpret this is we think about this equilibrium boundary being pushed outward.
by a certain amount. And in general, when we think about these non-equilibrium interpretations, we are taking lines on this diagram and we are shifting them left, right, up, down in order to have that interpretation. Now, the degree to which it shifts is going to depend on the rate of diffusion, the cooling rate as we, we drop, and uh, well, the temperature, which of course we can read off the diagram. So it's, it's a pretty non-trivial situation, and in fact, if we go to real systems, it's even more complex because now we also have to start thinking about the shape of the precipitates. So as you go from one uh, microstructure to another, whether your microstructures are you know, thin plates or spheres or needles, that's going to interpret the rate of uh, kinetics and the degree to which we deviate from the equilibrium structure.